GH and welcome to our video on withholding tax. This time we are solving um, past exam questions. The questions we'll be looking at um, will be two different questions. The first question will be from the May 2020 exam sitting. And then we'll look at another one from the November 2019 exam sitting. So these two questions combined should um, give us an idea how withholding taxes are examined. And then we, most importantly, begin to apply the concepts we have learned over the course of our withholding tax um, tuition videos. So it's important, um, follow through to the very end. I will leave a link to a downloadable version of this question, the PDF, in the comments. And then also probably somewhere in the description box below. So feel free to download and um, try to solve this yourself later after you've gone through this to the very end all right so let's start first thing we need to do obviously like i said for every exam question read the preamble and then read the requirement it will tell you how to approach the question so the first one obviously like i said it's um from the may 2020 sitting what do we have here they said the following unstructured invoice has been forwarded to adamo limited from a Seagull Limited, a standard rated supplier. This is very crucial information. What does it mean? It's important because here they are saying the goods are VAT inclusive. So we might need to do some extraction or some working back to get the gross amount on which to apply withholding tax. Don't forget the withholding tax is applied on the gross amount exclusive of taxes not inclusive so if they are saying this amount is VAT inclusive then you need to extract the VAT now the question is like I told you or like I've always said when it comes to exams every single word in the question is important it's there for a purpose so here they said your supplier the person you are dealing with is a standard rated supplier what would this mean for you if they are standard rated what this means is that they charge VAT at the standard rate. Simple, simple, right? So what is the standard rate of VAT? We know VAT standard rate is at 12.5%, but the 12.5% VAT is charged hand in hand with, so this is for VAT, is charged hand in hand with a 2.5% national health insurance levy and the 2.5% Ghana Education Trust Fund levy so yes this is a question on withholding tax but they found a way to test your proficiency in vat right here in this question so remember we would need to do some working back to get the gross figure on which to apply the tax okay and they are saying this transaction relates to the payment for goods if it's goods then remember that in our lessons we said the withholding tax rate for goods if you remember was what three percent even though the question is not asking, let's revise here. I also mentioned that for transactions that were in goods that constituted trading stock of both the vendor and the purchaser will be what exempt from withholding tax so even though the question is not asking this is our chance to revise right so anytime there's a transaction in goods and those goods will constitute trading stock of both the buyer and the seller of both the vendor and the purchaser then the three percent withholding tax will not apply however here they have not mentioned that um adamo and asigra both deal in the same goods so we can um, let go of that requirement to say it's exempt so here we need to apply withholding tax why did I mention this? If it's good, like I said, goods are what? 3% withholding tax. All right, the question is saying compute the withholding tax payable and it's for two marks. Very um, little mark allocation. Like I always say, in a professional exam, you are really um, scratching and clawing for 50 marks. So every single mark is important. Two marks can make the difference between um, a 49 and a 51. So it's important you get this right. And it's important you get it right and move on quickly to the next question. 
The next question is asking us to compute the penalty payable. Assuming Adamu Limited filed the withholding tax return 12 days after the due date. Once again, this question is not directly related to withholding tax. It's under a topic of tax administration. And if you have watched our video series on tax administration, we have given into a lot more detail the regime around penalties for late filing of returns. No worries if you haven't watched that yet. Um, I'll still go ahead and solve this. Hopefully in the coming days you'll have watched that and then you'll learn this as well. So we'll solve this as well and then we'll look at the solution. So this is what we need to do. Compute withholding taxes payable, number one. So we compute withholding tax payable. First requirement for two marks. Next is to compute the penalty payable. And they've given us the number of days that they have filed, which is 12 days late. And that is for three marks. So it's a five mark question that you must do very quickly. Get your five marks and move on. And you must get this right. All right. So let's come back here. We've seen what the question requires us to do. So we have um, this is question 5C. I'm assuming I'm in the exam. So I, they want us to find the withholding tax payable by Adamu Limited. All right. So we need to first establish that this is a transaction for goods as such a withholding, pardon my handwriting, a withholding tax rate of 3% will apply. Now, we know the rates, like I said, but we need to find the gross amount. So we've been told that VAT inclusive invoice value equals what? 3 million Ghana cities. All right. And VAT is under the standard rated scheme so now that we know all of this we need to go back and work back how do you do this um, there are many approaches all you need to do is to find a way to separate the tax from the amount depends on the approach you want to use but I'll, I'll show you mine you can find any other one you want to so what i will use is a simple markup and margin approach what do i mean so if we have to assume that if you have a cost um cost price and you add a certain profit margin that should give you a selling price right so if i am assuming that the raw cost will equal 100 the p here will equal my v8 so this will be the gross amount this figure here will be my amount exclusive of taxes representative of that my P here will be my V8. What's the standard rate VAT? For those who know, the rate is what? 18.125%. How did I get that? 18.125 because remember that to compute VAT, it is, if you're assuming, then it's going to be, if your invoice value is 100 cities, you compute what? 5%. That is for the NHL and get fund. So 5%. On that and then you compute 12.5 percent on top of that really right so or to make it simpler if you have 100 CDs and you gross up by 5 percent what would that give you it will give you what 105 this is the 
tax base for VAT. This is the, the base on which you compute VAT. That's the VAT amount plus the 2.5% NHIL and also 2.5% get fund levy, right? So that gives you 105. And this being the VAT base, you pick the 105 and you gross up by what's the 12.5% VAT. What does that give you? So if you have your 105 times your 1.125, you can see it gives you 118.125. So this is your 118.125. Then I subtract my 100. What does it give me? My what's 18.125. This is why I know that the effective VAT rate is 18.125 because you pick the invoice value you compute 5% NHIL, you add that together, then you compute the 12.5, I mean, you compute 5% NHIL and get fund, that is 2.5% each, add them together, then you compute the 12.5% VAT on top of what the NHIL and get fund, that will give you your 18.125. So my P here, which is my VAT, will be my 18.125. When I add this to, I should get 118.125. I'm going to use simple ratio and proportion, right? So this is just a rough working here. All right, my ratio and proportion is going to say that they are saying this 3 million here is inclusive of what? Taxes, standard rates. So I'll say if my 118.125 equals 3 million CDs, right? Because I'm saying my S over here is essentially what my C, which is my um, tax exclusive figure, plus my P, which is my tax, that will give me my S, which is tax inclusive. So if 118.125 equals 3 million, then what would the C be? And don't forget I'm saying the C is 100. So if 118.125 equals 3 million, then 100 will be what? You can solve for x, cross multiply, or you can do if um, more or less divide, whatever they call it. So here I'll say that if this is the case, then it will be 100 over 118.125 times 3 million. So that gives me 100 divided by 118.125 times three one two three one two three that gives me two five three nine six eight two point five four that is what i have so this figure this 2.5 million is my um tax exclusive figure that's a vat exclusive figure so this is the amount raw invoice amount without any nhl without any get fund levy without any vat now if i have this raw, um, raw figure it is this figure that i impose my withholding tax on so i'll say therefore withholding tax payable equals what 3% of 2539682.54. So just multiply this by 0 0.03. That gives me 76 Ghana CD. 76 190.48. Rounded off. So this is what I had to do to get two marks. Someone say it's a lot of work. Is it? Well, it is, but it's worth it. I think the only challenge for most students will be trying to split the VAT exclusive and inclusive figure. So three million given to you as um, inclusive of VAT. They were clear that it's standard rate and we had to split. Um, for those who want to know, it's possible the examiner, so let's come back here, I'll show you something. So instead of um, saying standard rates, 
they could have said they were under the VAT flat rate scheme. In that case, your tax rate would have been 3%. So let me show you how you'd have done that in case you get a question like that. So instead of 118.125 here, right, all you need to do is replace that with 3. So it becomes 100 plus 3, you get 103. And then your ratio will be what? If 103, so here, if 103 equals this, then 100 over 103 times, right? That would have been um, how to do it. So you just change the P here with what? 3. <clears throat> and that's how you would have um, gone about if you had um, a case of the VAT flat rate scheme. So that's it for um, the I part. II is asking us for the penalty. So they are saying compute the penalty payable. Assuming that Adamo Limited filed the withholding tax 12 days after the due date. Now, like I mentioned, this is something we've treated under tax administration, which is what a penalty for late filing of returns. So how do you go about this? So I I. All right. So penalty for late filing of returns now here whether you know it or not i'm going to say it anyways if you file a return late any tax return late in ghana the penalty is what 500 ghana cities plus what 10 cities for each additional day the return remains outstanding what this means is if you fail to file a return on the due date and instantly you have 500 cities to pay and for each day that passes you start accumulating 10 cities if that is the case can we not create a formula of some sort so you can call this tax law GH formula penalty anytime you have a penalty question just say penalty equals 500 plus 10x, right, where x is the number of days in default. That is after the original date. So here they are saying that um, Adamu filed the returns 12 days after the due date. So we just slot 12 into where x is and that is our answer. Simple. Very easy for three marks. So our penalty will become 500 plus 10 times 12. That gives us 500 plus 120. And that gives us 620 Ghana cities. So this is our penalty. You can see it was easier to get the three marks here than it was to get a two marks up there. But at this exam, um, that is exam. So that's it for the first question. Um, very easy, very simple to get your five marks. And you shouldn't be getting something like this wrong come exam day. It's really, really easy, really simple to get something like this correct. So let's look at the next question. We are done with this um, first sitting. So the next one is November 2019. This was question 2C on that paper here we have for five marks as well and um, let's see what they're asking us as usual i said you read the preamble first and then you read your requirements so below are the various contracts awarded to kpp books and stationery limited by the ghana water company for the 2018 years of assessment so here they said one is a books and stationery company one is a water company if they were both book, books and stationery, then please let your mind go to the exemption around um, trading stock of both vendor and purchaser, what I mentioned up here, which will lead to an exemption. Remember, like I said in tax, every question, every word matters. But here, there's nothing that is trying to trick us. So it's a straightforward question. Three contracts. The first is, a, um, okay, before we even come there, it's a what amount of withholding tax is due to the GRA um, in the 2018 year of assessment from Ghana Water Company. 
All right, so there are three contracts. The first one is what? The supply of stationery. So these are goods. And we know the rate will be what? 3%. So no problem. Um, costing 1,000 CDs in January 2018. Second contract was a um, supply of station diaries. Still goods. Costing 900 CDs. Third contract, additional stationery. Also goods. Costing 900 CDs. Here, what they're trying to test you on is, if you remember, we have said in our withholding tax series that for contracts dealing with the supply of goods, works, and services between what resident persons that do not exceed 2,000 Ghana cities over a one year period will be what exempt from withholding tax or the withholding tax requirement on goods, works, and services. So, all they are testing you on here is if you know whether or not the 2000 CDs threshold exists and if it does, does it apply to this scenario? So, there's a threshold of 2000 Ghana CDs for payments relating to goods, works, and services. If it's below 2000 CDs, you don't withhold, if it's above, you withhold. However, the law is clear that when it comes to dealings with a particular supplier the different contracts with that same supplier will be aggregated into one single contract for the purpose of determining the withholding tax payable and for the purpose of determining the threshold so here you can see that we have kpp books and stationery We have KPP Books and Stationery, and we have Ghana Water Company. It's just two parties dealing here. There's no third person. So it means Ghana Water Company is in contract with KPP Books. And you can see the first one was in January, still 2018. March, still 2018. August, still 2018. So we are required to combine these three contracts into one in order to determine the threshold. So be careful. Don't be too excited to say, oh, this thousand cities here, this first one here, you can say, oh, it's less than 2,000, I won't withhold. You say this 900 is also less than 2,000, I won't withhold. And this 900 is also less than 2,000, I won't withhold. No, you are required to combine all three contracts into one and withhold. So a question like this, I'll show you two approaches really because there are two approaches to um, this. So we can end this here. So this was question 2C. It's a withholding tax payable. So it's always nice to let the examiner know you know, right? So you can just write. Um, withholding tax under a contract of goods. You can ignore works and services because this question is on goods. Where the contract sum does not exceed 2,000 CDs is exempt from withholding tax. You said this. Then you can say for the purpose of determining the above threshold, separate contracts with the same supplier over a one year period are combined into a single contract. So we can see the threshold in this case is 
thousand cities plus nine hundred cities plus another nine hundred cities. Where did I get the figures? Just here, thousand, nine hundred, and another nine hundred. These two give me thousand eight plus thousand, so that gives me two thousand eight hundred. And this is clearly in excess of what two thousand. So we say the withholding tax due to the GRE. That's what the question is asking, right? In the 2018 year of assessment is 3% times Ghana C 2,800. So that gives me um, 0 0.03 times 2,800. So I, got, um, I have 84. 84 Ghana cities and this is your answer for five marks like I was saying there are two ways to do this um, so this is the recommended approach this is what I would have done if I were in the exam but another candidate can also go across, along the lines of practicality how practical is this approach what do I mean for instance see the way you made the payments the first contract was in January of 2018 the next one was in March, the next one was in August. Technically, you are required to account for withholding tax 15 days after the month to which was the payment or the transaction relates. So by the time they were making the 2018 transaction, they were still under the 2000 threshold, so they will not withhold. By the time they were making the March payment, it was still 1000 CDs here, plus 900 here, still 1009, still less than 2000, so they won't withhold. Then by the time they are making the final one, 900, that's when they have exceeded. So another uh, um, candidate can approach it like this, and it's still correct in any ways. So even though I'll use what we just did, but let's look at approach two. And the approach two, what you say is that same preamble, so you mention all of these things up here, 2,000 CDs threshold, just I like have to add that what's at the time of making payment, um, so let's say at the time of the first contract, let me just give you the point, 1,000 CDs is less than what, 2,000 CDs, so we say no withholding tax applies I, I at the time of the second contract you say what you now have thousand plus thousand nine I mean sorry thousand plus nine hundred I guess you thousand nine you say it is still less than two thousand so you say no withholding tax applies then i i i here you say that some exceeds what 2000 ie it is now what what do we get um 2800 so withholding tax is due on the whole amount you don't say it's just on this um final 900 no it's due on the whole um, amount so you would have said the same thing you still say three percent of what two thousand eight hundred to get your i think it was 84 except that here you need to make a note let the examiner know that the truth really is that when you are entering into contracts you don't because think about it if you were to wait to pay gre this 84 cds in august nobody will be happy with you we want money to develop the country so what the rule is in practice is if you are making your very first payment in January here and you anticipate that over the course of the year, you enter into other transactions with that person, start withholding right from the beginning. So here, for example, let's say from previous years, you know that you and KPP 
will deal in stationary. You know that the nature of a business, you will need stationary over the number of um, months in the year. Will it exceed 2000 If yes, then your very first payment here of 1000 please start withholding. Because you are very sure that when the year ends, or by the time the year comes to an end, you would have dealt um, with them more than 2000 So, even though I am not really in support of this solution, if you do it, you should still get it right. On the condition that you add a note that says that what they should anticipate that at the time they were making the very first payment with all tax to due. Because if you are doing this, then it means you are going to wait till August to pay these 84 CDs. GRE can impose um, penalties on you. So for me, even though both give you the same answer, and some people in, in support of approach two, approach one is the best. Once you have all the information like this in, the, in an exam, please add everything together. It's the same supplier. It exceeds 2,000 CDs. Um, you have 2,800. The rate is 3%. Apply it. And that should be the best. So this is the most recommended um, approach. You can ignore the one below. But if you do it, um, you should get some marks in the exam anyways. So yeah, this is it for um, withholding tax. Hopefully it's been very helpful. Um, we'll, we'll do a lot more questions on withholding tax, but this should just be a teaser, show you how the exam questions will look like come exam day. Um, when we're done with all the tuition videos, we'll like go head on, like big time, um, on exam questions after exam questions after exam questions, more questions than you can solve, and then let's see how proficient we can all be by the time exam comes around. So, if you love this, don't forget, as always, to smash the like button and don't forget to share this video within your entire network i'll catch you in our next video